Hello, everybody. Uh, the topic of my presentation today is the high throughput, low cost electrochemical device for bacteria detection. Uh, so, first, uh, I'm going to briefly talk about the current diagnostic method for infectious disease. And uh, we basically focus on uh, our methodology background, which is uh, loop mediated isothermal amplification or LAMP. And then we try to combine this method with the electrochemical technique to come up with the high throughput electrochemical cassette, which is a new device that we made for bacteria detection and quantification. And we briefly go through the fabrication process of uh, our flexible uh, ribbon. And uh, basically, we focus on two parts of real-time electrochemical detection of E. coli bacteria as a gram-negative uh, one. And uh, also, we, we modify our system in order to be able to detect the Staphylococcus aureus bacteria, which is a gram-positive one. So uh, infectious disease accounts for nearly 20 million out of uh, 50 million annual deaths, and it's a major problem in both developed and developing countries. So the m medical diagnostics uh, in uh, centralized lab and uh, hospital can provide the diagnostic as well as uh, suitable treatment. The main diagnostic techniques for bacteria is the culturing techniques that currently also in the hospitals uh, have been used. Uh, but the major drawback of this system is that it's, it takes a long time. It's uh, around two to three days. Some species takes more than a week. And also, it needs a microbiologist or high-skilled personnel. The other one is the LISA, that uh, it's a semi-quantitative, and uh, also it's time-consuming in comparison with the other techniques. Also, it's not providing good sensitivity. Um, the DNA hybridization and amplification techniques, however, provides a good result, accurate and fast. Uh, however, that one needs a centralized lab. Uh, the most commonly used uh, technique is the PCR, but uh, in order to be able to implement this technique in the lab on chip devices, uh, since it needs uh, three different thermal cycles, it's a bit challenging in the engineering approach to implement it as a lab on chip device. Therefore, uh, isothermal amplification technique has been uh, developed uh, over the past decade. Um, there are various of them, such as the NASBA or RCA, rolling site circle amplification, or a strand displacement amplification. But the major problem of these techniques is that some of them, like NASBA, needs uh, multiple enzymes. And uh, the other ones, uh, due to poor specificity, needs a elaborated method. Um, in uh, contrast, uh, LAMP techniques uh, provide the high sensitivity and uh, specificity. I don't know if the, the videos shows the process, but uh, it does not uh, need any thermal cycle. And uh, the, short, the amplification time is very short. It's between half an hour to one hour. And the whole system it works based on working uh, four to six sets of primers. And the primers binds uh, first uh, double surrounded DNA uh, will be single stranded by using the enzyme, just single enzyme, and then later on these six sets of primers will uh, bind to the single stranded DNA and makes a loop structure. And then by subsequent fifth prime annealing of this template, we can get the billions of copies. And as you can see here, the sensitivities in comparison with the PCR is is uh, it's uh, much less. And uh, due to using the six sets of primers, the specificity is very high, and the uh, amplification time also is very low. So our objective is to combine uh, LAMP technique um, with a high throughput analysis and also implement electrochemical detections to provide the point of care device. We used, as I said, the LAMP technique because it's simpler and uh, provides a high accuracy and also is fast. And uh, the main challenge in this case is that whether we can uh, basically implement other materials than uh, currently have been used, such as the plastic rolls, because it's very low cost. It's abundant around the world, so everywhere in the world, people can use the uh, plastic roll. And uh, the high throughput analysis, as you can see here, there is a high demand of the sample processing in the hospitals. There are like hundreds of thousands of the samples every day. And uh, by combining these three techniques, we can get the quantitative assay and also the low cost uh, um, device. So. Our uh, device uh, is the cassette. As you can see here, the cassette have been developed back in 1980s or 90s. And uh, this is the video audio cassette, probably you guys see it before. 
And uh, our cassette also like this cassette has the two reels, one provider which provides the, the flexible ribbons and the other one is the collector reels. The collector reels connected to the heater to uh, implement the heat for the amplification and we have the, we have the sets of uh, reservoirs which uh, at the bottom has the flexible electrode that you can see here. Uh, with the silver silver chloride uh, reference electrode and the carbon electrode working and also a carbon counter electrode. And uh, once we apply the samples here and also the lamp solution, once we roll the cover, the tape covers the whole samples and uh, subsequently we can connect it to the electrochemical readers for further analysis. So the fabrication process is, uh, is quite easy. We just uh, need the three layers of polyethylene ribbons. We attach uh, by double-sided camto tape, uh, and then we just punch it, and we remove the residues at the bottom to increase the flexibilities. And then at the bottom, we, up, we attach the um, flexible electrode, and once we apply the sample, we just cover it with tape. So the electrochemical detection mechanism that we use is using the redox uh, active molecules and also, we use the bacteria template. Uh, uh, unlike the many techniques that they use only pure DNA, we use the bacteria template and also the lamp solution. We use the thermal shock. Usually, for gram negative bacteria, 65 degrees is enough for, 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 for lysing the bacteria. And then, subsequently, we can uh, start the amplification. Uh, during amplification, redox molecule. Uh, binds with the amplicons and uh, these cause that the redox concentration start to get lower and uh, as you can see here with the square wave voltammetry technique we can see that the peak is going uh, lower and lower during amplification time. So we use this technique for our detection mechanism and uh, there are various redox complexes such as methylene blue, hexed or others also but uh, mainly the problem of this uh, Redox is that, for example, the hex uh, cannot be used for the real-time monitoring because it inhibits the lamp amplification. The other one is that uh, methylene blue uh, the low, has the low binding affinity, so there are other uh, types of redox molecules available that has uh, better um, characteristics. We have used the osmium redox uh, due to use due to have the high binding affinity. It also does not uh, inhibit the amplification. So for real-time uh, E. coli bacteria detection, we amplify the top genes of uh, E. coli bacteria, and we just uh, normalize our uh, signal with the square wave voltammetry peak at the amplification time with respect to initial point. We start to scan at each five minutes. We miss the first five minutes because uh, we let the sample get to the isothermal uh, temperature, which is uh, 65 degrees. And then um, we use uh, 0.5 micromolar osmium uh, concentration, which provides a very good signal. And uh, here is the, our uh, real-time uh, data that we got. As you see here, the negative control does not have any template of the bacteria or DNA. So we don't, uh, so it has very consistent behavior and we don't get any uh, lower of the peak. And uh, the other ones that has the bacteria's concentration, as you can see here, the starts, the peak height ratio starts to decrease drastically. And uh, we could detect uh, 30 CFU per milliliter of bacteria uh, in uh, around, uh, I can say 35 minutes. And uh, by setting 35 minutes uh, and also 0.8 as a threshold value, we can quantify our assay in the various formats. So we set, uh, as I said, the 0.8 uh, in our signal, and we could see that the, uh, the data can be interpreted based on amplification time versus the logarithmic concentration of the bacteria. As you can see here, we could detect 30 uh, CFU per milliliter in uh, around 35 minutes. And uh, this uh, graph also shows that how much amplification time we require in order to detect the bacteria. The other one is uh, we set uh, 35 minutes as a set point, and uh, we could uh, find, uh, as the, this graph can be set as the calibration curve, basically, that shows what a specific uh, signal uh, corresponds to a specific concentration of the bacteria. So 
uh, we could use it for, for our uh, uh, calibration of our device. The quantification of the Staphylococcus bacteria, or in general the gram-positive bacteria, is a bit more challenging. Uh, so for this case, uh, we amplify MCAT genes of the Staphylococcus aureus. However, the main problem is that uh, we need uh, 95 degrees uh, for the lysing of these bacteria. But uh, on the other side, the BST polymerase that have been used for the lamp techniques, it uh, starts to deactivate at the temperature above 70 degrees Celsius. So in this case, what we did, uh, we modified the, the, uh, the process. First, we applied the template of the bacteria around five microliters into each uh, chambers, and then we roll it back and provides a lysis step uh, at 95 degrees. It's uh, quite very short time, so the samples won't get evaporated. It's, it's, it's less than two to three minutes, and we can get, we can get, it, get uh, the samples lysed. And then uh, we extend the ribbons, we apply the lamp solution, and then finally we roll it back for the uh, monitoring of our samples. And here, we, what we got as, as our data for, uh, for real-time monitoring of the Staphylococcus aureus, like the previous one, as you see here, the negative control has uh, almost a consistent behavior, and the others uh, start to decrease drastically. We set uh, the threshold values of uh, 0.85, and uh, again, we quantify our uh, assay with different uh, format, and uh, we could detect 200 CFU per milliliter of the Staphylococcus aureus uh, in, uh, in uh, around 35 minutes. And the here also, uh, it shows the calibration curve that we got uh, with respect to uh, concentration of the bacteria uh, and uh, peak height ratio. In uh, many applications and uh, many assays, uh, quantification is not necessary. And uh, many uh, uh, people are just looking for existence of the bacteria. So in this case, uh, we use the endpoint detections, and uh, we set the uh, amplification times to almost the saturated limit, which is uh, 50 minutes. And uh, we start to just get the signals in the peak current signals in the square wave voltammetries. And uh, also, we try to uh, implement the cross-reactivity test to make sure that our assay is highly specific to uh, the target gene that we amplify. We have used the uh, Staphylococcus aureus DNA and the uh, Salmontosis DNA, and uh, also the various concentration of the bacteria. And we could see that uh, our assay is highly specific, both for E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus uh, bacteria. So with that, uh, we, in this uh, presentation, we summarize the current techniques for bacterial detection. We combine the electrochemical uh, cassette. We provide the electrochemical cassette for bacterial detection by uh, combining lamp techniques and uh, electrochemical detections. We could detect uh, E. coli bacteria as a gram-negative uh, model. And uh, the sensitivity was uh, quite uh, specific. It was 30 CFU per milliliter in 37.5 minutes. And we could uh, uh, make this analysis in the high throughput format uh, because we can roll at least 12 samples in our collector reels and uh, we could uh, monitor this in a real-time manner. And uh, we modify these techniques for providing the detection of gram-positive, some gram-positive bacteria, such as Staphylococcus aureus, with the sensitivities of 200 CFU per milliliter. And this assay significantly lowered the risk of uh, contamination because we don't need any post-processing techniques for, uh, for example, finding the result. So with that, I would like to acknowledge uh, the funding agencies and CERC Canada and Integrated Sensor Systems and uh, FQRNT of Quebec. And uh, if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer. <laughs>